we're going to look at creating an API based application. In doing so, we're going to use the new Rails 5 application API. So we can create a new Rails application. I'm just going to call this API demo. And then I'll pass in API so that the Rails application knows that this is going to be an API only based application. And with creating an API only based application, there are certain things that the Rails app will automatically exclude. So for example, when we start generating our controllers, we're not going to generate any of the views. So for example, if we want to create a scaffold, so we'll type Rails generate scaffold, and then we'll set our user, and we'll just create a first name, last name, and email address on here. And you'll notice that it's only creating our migration file, it's also creating our controller and our model. However, it's not creating the views that we would normally see with the scaffold generator. And if you look within your Rails application under the config directory and application.rb, you'll see that we have this config API only is set to true. And this will only load a smaller set of the middlewares suitable for the API only application. Stuff like your session flash cookies can be added back manually. However, it will skip views and helpers and assets when you generate a new resource. So the next thing I'm going to do is set up Puma Dev so that we can see our application within our browser. And I'll link to the previous episode that I did on Puma Dev, but it is as simple as typing Puma Dev link and then passing in a period for the current directory. And this will create a API demo, which we can then access on API demo.dev. And if we point our browser to api underscore demo dot dev, you'll see that the real application loads. And the nice thing about using Puma Dev is the native support for subdomains. So if we call a api dot api underscore demo dot dev, this will work just as well. And we can also use SSL certificates. So it'll just work right out of the box. And while we are creating a Rails 5 API only application, we're going to kind of treat this like a normal application with views. So within our routes, we can segregate the view portion of our application as well as the API portion. And we can do that with constraints. So the nice thing about using a constraint where we specify the subdomain name for our API portion of the application is that we can introduce load balancing or increase the number of API servers needed based on its usage. All right, to get started, we'll create our constraints and then we'll pass in subdomain and then we'll call this API and this will change the route so that the resources users is only available on the subdomain name of API. So as our API grows bigger, keeping it organized is really important. So we can create a name space around our controllers so that everything will go under an API directory. And so we can do that by just creating a namespace API. We can pass it to the root path and that's going to allow us to have our subdomain name of API while retaining everything under the API namespace. So that way we don't have API in our subdomain name but then also in our URI path. So going back into our console, we can type break routes so we can see what would be generated from our routes.rb file. And notice that our URI is looking at the root slash users instead of API and then users. But in our controllers, you can see that it's still keeping the folder name spacing of API and it is going to require the subdomain name API. So because we did namespace our user's controller, we created a new folder under our controllers directory called API. And then within our user's controller, we wrap the class user's controller with a module API. And if you're using Google Chrome, there's a really good extension called JSON formatter that will format your JSON output within your Chrome browser. So if you install this extension and add it to Chrome, when you go to preview your Rails application and the JSON responses, you'll see something like this, or say much prettier formatted output. You are also able to toggle from parse to the raw to see the raw output as well. I do plan on covering more API episodes in the near future with API versioning. So when your API gets to a point where you need to make breaking changes to where you can create a version of that API, keep the old working version, but then have your new features included in a separate version. And also with API authentication with device and JSON web tokens, how you can protect your application from unauthorized access. So a user must pass in a secret key in order to access the API or perform a certain action. 
then also we'll tie all of this in together into an iOS sample application. While we won't go too deep on the Swift code, I will show you the basics on getting the application to communicate with your Rails app and then pulling the data down. So if you do have any other suggestions on different API topics that you would like to see, sign up for a free account under Drift and Ruby, come to the suggestions section, and then add in your suggestion there. Well that's all for this episode, thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.